Hey, I'm Chris, and with the guys from Absolute down in Bournemouth, and I've got set up here our whole launch family of controllers. Uh, the launch pad has been around for a little while now, and is a fantastic controller for your kind of grid-based sequences and that sort of thing, but recently we've added to it with a whole variety of new launch products as well. So in this session, we're going to have a look at the launch pad, how that works. Next to it, you see we've got the launch pad mini as well. Launch key mini, which is the mini version of our launch key uh, controller keyboards. And also we've got the launch control, which is the perfect addition for anybody using launch pad, launch pad S or launch pad mini. So let's have a quick think about what the, um, uh, what the launch pad actually is and where that has come from. Now, to do this, I'm going to have a little bit of a think about Ableton software and kind of how that really has broken the mold for live performance with your laptop computer. Um, most music software is based around a timeline approach. Now, if I press tab on my computer keyboard here, this opens up my arrangement page within Ableton software. And this is your kind of traditional DAW um, look. So if I just uh, scroll across here, we can see across the top of the screen here, I have a whole load of numbers. These represent my bars or points of time, if you like. Um, and one of the great things about this is in this window, I can make all sorts of arrangements. I can start to cut, copy and paste and build my arrangement up in a nice visual way. So this is your kind of your traditional DAW uh, screen, which is great if you're gonna um, use your computer to maybe perform backing tracks and that sort of thing. But what happens if I wanna take what I've done in my DAW and actually take it out and perform live? Maybe making some improvisation, musical choices on the fly whilst, you know, whilst we're performing. So if I move back now by pressing the tab button, we open up the session view. And the session view is the first window that you come to in Ableton. But let's have a think about what we've got here. Here we've got loads of different clips, and these little boxes represent those clips. If I click on them, you see I get some waveforms at the bottom of the screen. And each one of these vertical lines represents a track. So on the other page, these are shown um, horizontally across the screen, and in the session view, they're shown vertically. Now with these clips, what I'm able to do is actually launch these as and when I want. The clever thing about Ableton is that it kind of works really well with tempo and BPM and beat matching so that everything will always stay in time. We can also stagger when we start the actual clips as well so that we know they're always going to start bang on the beat. Now if I use my mouse to trigger this, I'll just simply you know, click this track here, we'll get a kick drum coming through. Okay, that's great. We've started the click track, uh, the kick track, and um, now I'll uh, hit the percussion uh, track, and then maybe these tops here as well. So you can hear how everything's nicely tight in time, and that's brilliant. And I'm able to just change these as and when I want. So let's just change the beats around. So from that point of view, it's great. We can now start to improvise break down, deconstruct our music, and take it into a format that we can actually perform with. But the limitation that I've got is, um, like most people, I only have, well, two thumbs, and on my trackpad, I'm only able to actually click with my thumb one clip at a time. So if I want to start a lot of clips, I've got to be quite quick and quite accurate with what I'm doing on the trackpad, so which can be quite difficult. So that's where Novation came along with the launch pad. The launch pad is a grid of 64 buttons, and we have a number of different modes that these buttons will work in. The first page that we have is our session view. We also have two user views and a mixer view as well. Let's have a think about the session view initially. So on the session view, these 64 buttons, when connected to Ableton, will now represent the clips that we have in our Ableton Live set. I can navigate around using the left and right and up and down arrows as well, so I, I can access any of the clips that I've got in Ableton directly. To trigger them, it's really straightforward. I look for the pads that are lit, and here we've got some yellow pads. These show me that I've got content in there, but it's not playing at the minute. If I hit it, it will go green, and now I can start to perform and actually play these, uh, these clips as and when I want. So when I want to change round, So 
So this is great because now I'm actually starting to build music up in a live way. If I want to launch a whole scene, so maybe I've prepared um, in, in my music this particular scene to work together really well. So if I press this circle button at the end, it'll play that whole line of samples for me. So it makes it really easy to launch whole sections of music at the same time. So that's really how the uh, session view works as well. Now, if we move across now to our mixer page, which is the button on the far right here, press mixer. Now we have a series of buttons running down the side, these circle buttons. We use these to launch scenes in the session view, but now in the mixer page, they let me access different menu sections. If I press the volume button, I can now use the launch pad as a fader. If you look at the channel um, volume fader on channel one, this will actually follow what I'm doing on the launch pad. And of course I can quite easily just draw in maybe some you know, volume changes really quickly and easily. I can even use these as just switches. So if I wanna kill everything and just run quickly across like that, bring it all back in like that. So a really powerful little mixer. Again, I can use my navigation arrows to find the channel that I want to control. Next to the volume control, I have a pan control as well. And the pan control will let me send things out to the left or to the right hand side. So this can be useful if you wanna move sounds around in the stereo spectrum. I also have access to two sends. Now a send effect is where I can take a channel within, um, within my software and send that out to a second channel. And on that second channel, I may well have some effects that I can apply to that signal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop all of my clips just so we can hear how this works. So back to session view, I'm gonna trigger this, this kick drum, nice and straightforward. Back to my mixer page, go to send A. Now on send A, which is represented here in my send section, and here is the send. Let me just open this up so we can see it. I have on this channel a delay. So now when I use the send control here, I'm gonna send the kick drum out to that ping pong delay sound. If I go to send B, I've got some reverb on this one, so let's add some reverb. And once again, because these are buttons rather than faders, I can instantly switch them on and off. So that's how we can use the send control on Launchpad to apply effects to our signals. Underneath those kind of fader um, uh, controls that we have in the mixer page, we also have some other controls here, including stop, which will allow me to stop any of the clips that we've got running. I can turn tracks on and off. This is effectively like muting a track so we can completely kill the signal coming from that. I also have a solo button. This will allow me to isolate that particular track. So if we've got everything playing, but I just want to isolate the kick drum, for example, I can just solo that kick drum. Everything else will stop sounding and I'll just be able to concentrate on the kick drum. Underneath the solo control, I have an arm button. And this is really useful for being able to record arm or prepare a track ready to record into. We're gonna do a little bit of that right now. So I'm gonna go back to my session view and I see that here on channel six, my record arm is made. And I'm going to go into my uh, user one mode. <clears throat> now you may have noticed me pressing the user one button a couple of times there. I'm gonna show you some other interesting things that we can do with the launch pad in a moment, but let's just concentrate on what we can do straight out of the box. In user one mode, we have the ability now to control our drum racks. And a drum rack in Ableton is a collection of different samples that we, uh, that we can populate the sample player with. And if I just scroll down here like this, we'll see I've got a kick drum. Oh, if I click on it, there we go, we have a nice kick drum. So in user one mode, we're able to control the drum racks within Ableton. The drum racks are a great way of being able to uh, congregate a whole load of sampled sounds and put them in a nice easy interface ready to play. If I go to my uh, channel here, we'll see on my drum rack that I have a collection of different samples available to me. So here's a kick drum. Here's another and another. I have a choice of different kick drums there. Here's a clap, some more, and hi-hats as well. Now, with the uh, launch pad, what I have here are effectively two columns of four buttons. So this is column one, and this is column two. And that what we do is if we take this second column, we can you know, essentially stick it on top of the first column to give us a full range of control over the samples. So here's a kick drum that we, record, um, that we can play. 
So I can now start to do some sort of finger drumming style stuff. That sort of thing, if we wanna play live. Or using the uh, launch pad, I can actually start to create my own clips in a live situation. So I'm gonna go back to my session view. I'm gonna trigger this kick drum as just really as a reference point. It's like a metronome, if you like, just to keep me in time. So here we go, there's the kick drum. Now, remember on our mixer page, we have this channel record arm. This is ready to be recorded into. So the next step is I'm gonna actually create a dummy clip or, or an empty clip, if you like. So I'm just gonna basically uh, start the clip, let it go for two bars and then stop it. So this hasn't actually recorded any sounds into there, it's just created a container for me to actually play directly into. Now, go back to my user mode, and I have already MIDI mapped my overdub button, which is this top button here, to this particular button. So this allows me to turn it into record mode and turn it out of record mode. So if you look at our session view, whilst it's in record mode, it's red. If I take it out of record mode, it's green to say we're not recording. Let's go back to user one, put it into record mode, and now I'll start to play some drum sounds in. Okay, so we've got a kick drum in there. I'll add some hi-hats. Maybe we'll add some uh, claps to this now. Um, let me just move up to see what other samples I have and see if we can add something else there. Yeah, so we've got some nice toms as well. Let's add some toms to this. So there you can see how we can use the launch pad to quite easily build up some really quite nice rhythms just by using the launch pad alone. We haven't really used the computer at all to actually create this music. So that's user one mode but we also have a second user mode as well. This is user two. And on user two, uh, on the user two page, what we're able to do is actually control parameters and devices um, within our uh, Ableton set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put a filter control on this top row of buttons. And it's really easy to do. Within Ableton, if I press Command and M, click on the parameter I want to change, which in, in this instance is this cutoff point here. I'm gonna press this button, hold it down, and then press this button, come out of MIDI learn mode, and now this top row will actually control the filter. So let's just bring the filter right down, start the clip off, go back to user two, and now we can start to build that up. So you can see, even though this is just a little box that has a load of buttons on it, there's a lot of control available to you. Now, I mentioned earlier about some additional things that we can also do with the launch pad. The launch pad has a lot of love out there. A lot of people do use it and use it in a live situation, use it for production work as well. And some very clever people have taken it upon themselves to write their own additional features into Launchpad. One particular little package is called Launchpad 95, and it's freely available on the internet. If you Google Launchpad 95, it'll take you to, uh, to the website where you'll be able to get hold of it. But it really brings some new, um, fantastic ways of working with Launchpad. So let's have a quick look at them. Okay, so what is Launchpad 95? Well, basically what it does is it adds extra layers into the user modes, um, which gives us a lot more control. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that dummy clip, the same as I did earlier, but this time we're gonna, use, we're gonna create our beat in a different way. So I'm gonna trigger the empty clip, get two bars, there we are, it's now sorted. Go to my user two mode, and if I press the user two button again so that it goes green, what we have now is what's known as a step sequencer. In the bottom left-hand corner here, I can choose the sample that I want to work with, and I can move up and down using these green arrows through my samples that I have available. And we see now I have a, a yellow light that's running in time with the music. These are the 16 steps per bar represented on my launch pad. So if I wanna bring in some new kick drum, I can just put steps in. And there we see that's loaded in. Let's put some hi-hat in. 
maybe some snare. I'm going to move up to, let's see, this sample here. take steps off as well just by going back to the sample and then just pressing the button again that will remove it from the uh, from the step. We can extend our bars as well by pressing this button and holding this button. It's now going to run for two bars but I've only recorded into the first bar so we'll just keep it at that for the moment. So this is a really great way of being able to create beats that are always going to be in time because we're working in step sequence mode which is really neat. Now, the other thing that we can do as well, if I go to my mixer page, I'm going to now record enable the next track that I have here. I've called it piano, but basically on here we have an operator, a synthesizer. Now if I go to user, or go to my session mode, create an empty clip again, and then there it is, we've got the empty clip ready for me to use, but I'm not actually going to use it, I'm just going to go to user one mode, and I'm now going to press user one until we get a yellow uh, representation there and now the launch pad will act as a keyboard. Brilliant. Okay so that's out of tune or in the wrong key so what we can do is if I hold this button I can choose a different key so let's go up to this one which is an F and now hopefully we should be in, in pitch. Maybe not but we can experiment. <laughs> Here we've got different octaves that we can choose from as well. And here we've got a whole variety of different scales to choose from as well. Got some weird and wonderful scales here, so. So you can see that we've got a lot of additional control with Launchpad 95. As I say, the Launchpad 95 has been um, a script that somebody has, has, has taken on board themselves and, and created to work with the, uh, with the Launchpad, but it brings a whole load new um, a, additional functionality to it. And as it's completely free, it's definitely worth getting hold of. So there we've had a really good look at the Launchpad, and you'll have noticed that I've done all the demonstrating here from the Launchpad S. But right next to it, we also have the Launchpad Mini. The Launchpad Mini functions in exactly the same way as Launchpad S. The only difference being that, of course, we have smaller buttons and it's a much smaller footprint. The Launchpad S is a lot bigger, obviously, um, and it also has incredibly bright LEDs. Um, in the studio here, we've got quite a lot of light, but the LEDs are coming through really nice and brightly so I can see exactly what we're doing. We've also been using Launchpad to control Ableton. But of course, the Launchpad can control a variety of different software as well. If you're an FL Studio user, the Launchpad is a perfect control surface for you as well. And in the box with the Launchpad, you'll find that you get a whole load of stickers that you can place over the um, Ableton decals there, or over the numbers and the letters that we have on the Launchpad Mini, and that will show you which FL Studio page you're controlling. I mentioned earlier about the Launchpad 95 a script that somebody has written for Launchpad, um, but also there are, there's a lot of other uh, programs available that, to work with, with the Launchpad nowadays. For example, if you're a Traktor user, you can find plenty of, of MIDI mappings um, for Traktor um, that will give you access, full access to both remix decks within the software. So it's a great way of being able to use the Launchpad alongside your DJ controller to work with remix decks. So that's a really good look at the Launchpad. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of other videos as well covering Launch Control and Launch Key Mini, so do make sure you watch those. If you've got any questions at all, give the guys here at Absolute Music a call. Um, you can also find information on novationmusic.com. Okay, thanks very much for watching.